Welcome to Reach the World ASAP. My name is Scott Griswold, the Associate Director for ASAP Ministries. I want to ask you directly, if you had only six years to live, what would you do? What would you try to accomplish for Christ? Think for a moment about the legacy you'd leave behind while we take a quick glimpse back into the life of a young man named Henry Martin who lived quite a while ago. Henry had no interest in missions. He gave little thought to God. He was studying to be a lawyer. There he was, the top student, top math, top everything. He won prizes in Latin, extremely gifted. But Henry wrote, I obtained my highest wishes, but was surprised to find I had grasped a shadow. Is there anything in this world that really gives us satisfaction? Into that emptiness fell a book about David Brainerd, a missionary to Native Americans. Stories wafted over the ocean from India there to England where Henry was living about the great missionary and translator William Carey. Most importantly, the love of Jesus Christ reached down into Henry Martin's heart and captured him. He gave his life to God. So what would come next? He decided to throw himself into the great mission field of India and beyond. Would his sweetheart Lydia Grenfell join him? She would not. That was really hard for him. He said goodbye and never made it back to see her again. As he headed out across the oceans, he had incredibly lonely feelings. He wrote, My feelings were those of a man who suddenly would be told that every friend he had in the world was dead. The waves rose up between him and home. He turned and faced forward. He was on the sea for many days, but he didn't just sit around. He was studying the language. He studied so hard that when he got off the boat, he talked with the great William Carey in Bengali instead of their native English tongue. As he looked around at the masses of Hindus and Muslims in Calcutta, it was a very hot, humid April day, and he cried out, Now let me burn out for God! It was 1806. He made his living by being a chaplain for the Englishmen who were working in India, but he poured himself into learning the Hindustani language. That's the language that would later become Hindi and Urdu, which are used all across India and Pakistan. Within five years, he had made an excellent translation of the New Testament. Many other Bible translations in various languages over the years have had to be tossed aside for better improvements, but not his. It was done with incredible devotion, ability, and a lot of prayer. Next, Henry Martin started translating the New Testament into Persian while also overseeing an Arabic translation. Can you imagine reviewing over and over one scripture passage and searching for just the right words to rightly represent the beauty and truth of God's word? Translating is such hard work, but he relished the task. Henry wrote, What a source of perpetual delight have I in the precious book of God. Oh, that my heart were more spiritual to keep pace with my understanding. He studied carefully the habits and cultures of the local people. He treated them with great respect. He said, I learned that the power of gentleness is irresistible, and also that these men are not fools. Clearness of reasoning is not confined to Europe. But time was short. Tuberculosis had killed both his parents and his sister. Now it was after him. The doctor recommended rest and sent him out to travel on the sea. It helped a little and he headed up to Shiraz in Iran. But the intense heat of 120 degrees wore him down. He spent a year there in Shiraz, refining his Persian language, improving his New Testament translation. He discussed the nature of Jesus with the great Muslim men. They really appreciated having the Gospels in their own language. But the tuberculosis had not gone away. He headed towards England through Constantinople, but the disease took him down. On October 16, 1812, after only six years of mission work at the age of 31, he died. India and Persia lost a great man. But those six years made a worldwide difference. His Bible translations touched many. His example inspired thousands more. What if you had only six years to live? Martin said, I see no business in life but the work of Christ. What is your work for Christ? I hope you'll pause and think deeply, pray long, set out on your journey more deliberately with greater focus, devotion, and determination. This podcast is about your and my next six years, but I also have a translator friend that I want to mention. I've told you about Brian and Dewan Wilson's story before in a podcast called Eating, Drinking, and Breathing Translation. 
God has given them amazing language skills. They've spent years in Thailand and Laos working on the Bible, Ellen White's writings, and other materials. Right now, they're back in America to take care of Brian's parents and trying to provide for their children's education. ASAP Ministries is a channel for funds so the Wilson family can put more time into translation instead of various jobs to survive. Today, I'd like to find 23 people who will give $100 a month towards their work. The big project that we want to see done is the incredible book, Patriarchs and Prophets. There are 66 million Buddhists in Thailand who need this book in their hands. Will you help? Go online at asapministries.org and look in the gift catalog under Evangelism to see their project. Of course, you can give whatever God puts on your heart, but if you're able, consider $100 a month to put this project on solid financial ground. You can call us at 269-471-3026 and set up a reoccurring gift. Now we need to get back to living those next six years of our lives. Together, let's reach the world ASAP.